that I was trying to decide if it was appropriate for Halloween where I should put it a month later or if I should just upload it now and I was too excited about it to wait. So this is an Ursula design where she has her crystal ball and there are different scenes that you can put into it so you can change what she's seeing in her crystal ball and it is so extreme and over the top and cool. I love it so much. I am a huge Ursula fan or really any Disney villain. In fact, the person I'm using right now is Ursula and it's pretty awesome and it just I don't know. The whole thing. I just love it. I love the different scenes. You can change what they are. You can do different scenes from what I did and really have fun with it. If you do decide to do a recreation and you switch things up, I'd love to see it. So please share recreations with me. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy this video and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. Bye! So here we are, we're going to begin with an overlay of a glittery black acrylic. This is one of my absolute favorite villain color backgrounds, and you will see me use it at least a few times over the course of the month of October. Like I said, I was trying to decide if this nail was appropriate for Halloween or if I should just upload it, and my impatience got the best of me, and I was just too excited to save it. So now that we have that background color done, we're going to encapsulate with a layer of clear acrylic to make sure that it is nice and strong. It also helps to protect that glitter that is in the background. And the glitter that's in the background isn't one that's like super like especially a really metallic silver uh, glitter really doesn't look good if you accidentally file it but the one that's in the background wouldn't have been the worst thing but it does definitely add strength to do that clear encapsulation so now we're going to file the nail into shape with our e-file to make sure it's all smoothed out really go over it you want a stiletto to look nice and and narrow and elegant so now with lavender color acrylic we're going to begin sculpting ursula's face and when you're sculpting ursula's face you want to choose a lavender acrylic that is really creamy as far as like the texture for working with it but very 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 pigmented. We have a very dark background and you don't want to be sculpting Ursula's face and have a thinner area just to help with the image show the black background through it. So make sure that you pick one that is just very, very, very pigmented. The one I am using here, I am almost 100% sure is Magnolia from Double Dip. And I will put all of the Double Dip color names in the description box below. But if you, you know, sometimes pastels kind of have a milky texture to them and they just don't show the color or they don't they would show through the background color and you don't want that to be the case. So whatever works, whatever you have, whatever works, but just bear that in mind. Otherwise, if that is a problem, you may need to choose a different background color, even a clear, but just something, something else. So we're going to do after we have kind of the base of her face worked in, and then I'm going to go through and start building up the different planes of her face. So I'm going to go from like her brow bone and then down through the bridge of her nose. And I'm gonna to try to blend that out a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. It is just a, a preliminary, every shape I'm doing here in the beginning is preliminary. It's everything that you're just sort of slowly finding the positions of things. And don't rush it, try to just take your time, try to build it up from the ground up essentially and just do you know, the different shapes that you see one at a time and give yourself a moment to appreciate the reference photo and to really look at it and make sure that what you are seeing is what's there. One thing that I noticed, and this is every time I paint or uh, sculpt Ursula, is I never make her chin neck flubber area big enough in the beginning and so then as you'll see in a moment I'll go through and I will increase that but that's just one thing that I know that I always do and if you weren't going to re-examine your reference photo you may miss something like that and then your end result you'll just have to look at it and be like you know something seems like it's missing so here's where I'm going to go through and fix it and it's one of those things where as I was even sculpting this I remember I had this thought in my head I'm like make that bigger make it bigger than you think it should be because it's still going to be too small and then it was still too small so it's just it's one of those funny things and I painted Ursula enough that I I know that that's that's something that happens with me so we're just going to kind of break, break that even bigger yet so it's not just, what I like to do is I'll just sculpt it to where her chin is but her chin is kind of in the middle of this whole area so like I'm going to be adding her chin now. So I'm going to be sculpting her little chin in just a little, a little bump in the road kind of in that area. And then you're also going to need to just add a very thin layer of that lavender acrylic kind of over from like her shoulders and then down over her neck area and her upper chest. And as I said, you want to make sure your lavender acrylic is super pigmented. This is really where that notion comes into play because you don't want it to show that black background through. So it doesn't have to end in like a pretty certain way at the at the bottom of that section. Just kind of blend it down. And now with a very light shade of gray or white acrylic, um, kind of either one will work. If you do gray acrylic for the beginning, then you'll do some shading with 
um, or you do highlighting with white and if you start out with white acrylic and then do some shading with gray. So it's whichever way you prefer to use. I have this really pretty super light gray color that I was just really excited to use. So that is what I decided to go with and we're just going to add the different sections of her hair. And to give it kind of a current, uh, there's different directions that Ursula's hair you know frequently you can see it kind of flowing to one side or the other I wouldn't just make it go straight up this is personal preference but I would give it a direction I would either have the hair kind of being blown to the left or to the right and whichever whichever way you prefer and maybe if you're looking at your nail and say Ursula gets a little off center which stuff like that happens all the time and you're looking at you're like you know what she's just a little bit crooked send her hair in the opposite direction so if she's sitting kind of off to the left side of the nail pull her hair into the to the right direction and it'll even though it won't be centered it'll make it look more purposeful if that makes sense i hope that that is a logical statement so now we're going to fill in her eye sockets with gray we're going to do a lot of the shading and a lot of what i may possibly do as painting with acrylic this time instead and it's going to give it just all of these different layers so if you were thinking that her eye sockets looked incredibly deep in the beginning of the of the video that's because i knew i was going to fill them in and they were going to have a lot of height built up in them and i didn't want it to look out of place so if you didn't have such a height uh, like a height built up to her brow bones maybe you'd want to do that gray layer that i just did with acrylic paint instead of doing it with acrylic then we're going to be sculpting her eyes with white acrylic and her teeth so when you're sculpting her teeth try to try to be gentle or careful with it to make sure that it does sort of set you up for success when you go through and sculpt her lips so you want want that beginning teeth area to be in just the right place if it isn't you can fix it with the lips but it's easier to fix the white than it is to fix the red because the red might tend to stain when you go through and do her lips i'm going to add a shimmery aqua color to her eyelids if you had one that was ever so slightly darker than this that may have been a better choice i didn't and so i just went with the color that i had which i think is beautiful it's got that little bit of shimmer to it which adds to ursula's sort of grotesque glam so you don't want to uh, that's a nice a nice little addition there but if it was ever so slightly darker that would have been would have been nice i'm gonna add her ears off to the sides just kind of right on the sides of her hair there and then as you're adding all of these details just keep going back to your reference photo i can't uh, stress that enough and then we're going to go back to our background color which is that glittery black like i said she has sort of a grotesque glam to her it's just the the evilness and she is based off of a drag queen so i mean glitter glitter all the way um but we're going to go through and do the top of her i never know what to call this this happens to me every time i do an ursula video i don't know if it's a dress or not because it's, it kind of fits her as a dress on top but then it goes right into her tentacles so it's like a built-in dress skin uh, we're going to be doing the top of that and then with a metallic gold acrylic you're going to paint her little seashell necklace and this is a case of i didn't know whether to paint it or not because you see ursula looking in her crystal ball both before she has a necklace and afterwards so that's kind of an up to you i think it's just an iconic thing to have the necklace but if you want to do a lot of the scenes that she's going to be viewing in her crystal ball from before she makes a deal with ariel maybe you'd want to skip the necklace but then with a red color again add some glitter add some shimmer to it a shimmery red or a glittery red is beautiful for her lips we got to give her some some glam we're going to be doing her lips with that do it carefully make sure that it's an acrylic that you're familiar with don't use a new one for this you want it to be something that is a trustable reliable really easy to work with product and i specifically chose this red that i'm using for that fact that it's just really easy to work with and I knew that it would make her lips a little bit easier on me because I didn't want to get her teeth stained red. Then with some black acrylic, we're going to be sculpting her eyebrows in. This is something where if you would have preferred to do this with acrylic paint instead, sometimes black acrylic can be a temperamental. That could be a choice that you could make as um, just to, you know, to make it easier. Everything that I'm doing in, in my videos, I like to give, I like to give options of things to do as an alternative uh, alternative deci uh, decision just in case whatever I'm doing your products don't work with you you don't have those colors you know something where you'd want to do something else every single thing could be done differently I mean just or in a different manner a different order different products so you don't have to look at anybody's video mine included as like the end-all be-all it's it's a suggestion it's an idea it's a concept so 
if you know if you are somebody that prefers to work with gel you can make all sorts of great stuff with gel you don't have to just do it with acrylic but that doesn't mean that watching an, a video done with acrylic doesn't have value to you so after i did a little bit of highlighting on her hair with some white acrylic i'm going to be using a really rich purple color for her little seashell earrings they don't show up so much against the black background in the video but they show up much more vibrantly in person so now on a nail form backing, I'm going to be sculpting Ursula's two arms. So this nail, like I said in the, in the intro is over the top. It's extreme. It's bigger than life and it is bigger than the nail. So we're going to be sculpting her arms separately and attaching them so that they can stick off the sides of the nail and give her some really nice, really detailed width. If you are looking for a video of a wearable 3d Ursula, what you would do is you would not do this step. You would not make these arms. You would leave her as she is on the nail right now and you would skip ahead to where I'm painting her and just do the final details in paint and then basically ignore everything else. And you'd have a very wearable, very wicked, super cool Ursula nail. So we've got her forearms, which is what I sculpted first and then her upper arms. So just sculpt, sculpt those two arms first. They're pretty much the same. And then you're going to sculpt her arm or her hands. I decided to not make her hands symmetrical. I made each one in a slightly different pose. I think that just gives the whole design a little bit more interest and it looks a little more realistic because how often are our hands posed exactly the same way? It doesn't happen too often unless we're doing it on purpose. So for this video, I'm going to be, or for this design, I'm going to be doing her hands in two slightly different poses, one from the side of her hand and one like she's reaching towards the crystal ball. So we're just going to do this and I'm going to go back and forth from hand to hand sculpting individual fingers and so you're not going to want to just try to do all the fingers on one hand in a row you want to give them a chance to corn to cure before you mess around with that hand again so do one finger on each hand alternating back and forth so here's the next one this is this particular step of the video sculpting the fingers is something that as you are following along with it just have patience it is tedious it is so incredibly tedious actually and it's one of those things where right before I started sculpting them and I do this occasionally I don't talk about it much but I do where I will look at it and I think oh my goodness did I just bite off more than I want to chew do I really want to be doing this sculpting hands am I sure and then I do it and I'm glad I did it and that's the case with this and if that's how you're feeling before you do it the advice I always give myself and the advice I'm always going to give anybody is just do it like you know like the Nike shoe just not Nike shoe but you know Nike the reason I said Nike shoes, I have a Nike shoe video from a long time ago and I wrote just do it because um, it's something I tell myself in my own brain all the time. Um, I can put a link to that video in the description box below, by the way, in case anybody's interested or missed it. I, that's actually one of my favorite all-time designs. I think it's awesome. So I, I can link that. But anyways, just do it. Stop, stop talking yourself out of it. Just by golly, pick up your acrylic brush and your panties by the straps and yeah, get it done. I don't know where I was going with that. But anyways, just just do it. By gosh, you never know what kind of amazingness you're going to make if, if you actually give it a try. So after we have her fingers all sculpted, tedious as it may be, we're going to be taking the same color that was used for her lips to sculpt her fingernails. So a glittery red. When you're picking out your glittery red, I know I said before to use one that's really easy and workable. And one thing to keep in mind is don't pick one that the glitter flakes are too large because you'll have trouble getting little details done with it. So do one that's got either really fine glitter or is more of a shimmer rather than glitter. So now that her fingernails are all sculpted and her arms are done, you're going to glue those arms in place by just dipping. I like to do this. I'll dip the, my pieces of acrylic in nail glue. So I'll just take and I'll put some nail glue down on a piece of nail form backing that I'm going to throw it anyways and use that as a little, a little dipper. So I'll dip them in instead of applying the nail glue to the design. I think that there's a little bit more precision involved with dipping and sticking versus applying the nail glue and then hoping for the best and nail glue tends to get all over the place. So I think that that, that method usually yields better results. So I'm going to do one arm and then I'm going to do the other arm. That time I decide to paint down the nail glue. You never know. I do things differently all the time. So you're going to hold that one in place till that glue sets up and then secure it to the nail with more of your, that lavender color acrylic, just making sure that that arm isn't going to go anywhere. And then once the arms are secure, you can either choose to leave it like this with gaps between the arm and the nail right in kind of the elbow pit area and the armpit and it would be fine. When I was looking at that, this was my intention was to leave it like just, just like that. And I thought she looks oddly muscular and really thin. And that's not really how Ursula looks. So I thought, you know what, to fix that so she doesn't look muscular, she looks more, I don't know, flubby a little bit. We're going to um, 
fill in those spaces. So I held a nail form backing up and I'm going to create a little bridge from her arm to her body on top of that nail form backing. Once that's cured, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, nail form backing, slide it underneath there, and then just bridge those two spots together. And it doesn't, it's actually pretty easy, but you do have to hold your nail form backing really steady, which as you can see, doesn't, that part in itself is not necessarily the easiest task. But once you kind of get it all worked in and the acrylic is in place, just maybe 30 seconds, a minute is all you have to hold the nail form backing in place. And then the acrylic is sturdy enough that you can let go. Then trace something circular on a piece of scrap paper. My circular thing ended up being a little bigger than I was hoping for, so I'm drawing another circle inside my circle. Just as long as you have a relatively circular template made, then lay a nail form backing on top of said template, and we're going to be sculpting four circles with clear acrylic. I'm gonna do that again, there we go. That first bead was just a little too stiff. And for some reason, so I use two kinds of monomer back and forth quite often. I use Koopa's sculpting monomer and their 3D monomer. This is a job for just the sculpting monomer and inevitably I was using the 3D monomer, but uh, the sculpting monomer would have made sculpting these circles a little easier. So they didn't set up quite so quickly, but either way, sculpt four circles that are full circles and then sculpt one more. This time it's going to have a notch out of the side of it. So instead of sculpting just your regular, you know, full circle, create a little, a little gap on one end. And that's going to make it so that when you have the little scenes that you slide in to your crystal ball, it's got a little bit of something that you can use to help pull the scenes out of. It's like a little finger grip. So that's what you're sculpting on the side. It doesn't have to be a certain size or certain shape, just as long as it's gonna help you out that way. So now we're going to sculpt a long strip of clear acrylic, pat it out very thin, try to get as thin as you can, and then just set that to the side for a moment. Use a nail file to separate one of your circles from the circle with the notch. A nail file that's a, you know, a relatively thin, not a thick one. And then grab that strip of clear acrylic and wrap it around the two circles. So what you're doing is you are attaching them together at a very set spacer. So you're using your file as the spacer. And then after you have that, leave the nail file in between those two clear circles and you're going to secure that little border strip with more clear acrylic. So this whole process, I was really impressed with how easy it was. The trickiest part I would say is finding a nail file or anything. It just has to be something that's the right size and the right thickness to separate these with. And I was very glad that this little nail file worked out well for me. But if you can't find a nail file, you could even use a piece of folded paper that was folded to the right thickness. That would work as well. And then glue the crystal ball to the tip of the nail after it's all cured. So you're going to glue it there with the, the circle that has the little spacer on it or the little finger gap towards the back. Secure it to the nail with some clear acrylic. And then after you have that, I'm just going to add some more clear acrylic behind her arms just to give them a little bit more structure. Then I'm going to use some clear builder gel to create a slight dome effect to my crystal ball. So I'm gonna apply a pretty thick layer of that, flip it upside down, cure it, and then add a little white highlight, cure that again, finish the whole crystal ball with some gel top coat. Make sure you go all the way around the sides too, even the back. You want it to look really clear and you know, like, like it's a crystal ball. Then we're going to do all the final details of Ursula's face with acrylic paint. I'm going to start out with a shade of purple and adding just some little outlines here and there. She is a cartoon and even a fairly old cartoon. I mean, The Little Mermaid, it's, it seems like it's a new one in my brain, but it's, it's 30 years old, just about. So the details are a little bit more precise. It's got a little bit more outlining. It's not as realistic as say, Frozen or Moana or Raya or one of those newer animated movies. It's got some some like classic classic animated styling to it. So we're going to do all of those purple outlines just make her look so so vivid so like she's going to jump right off of the nail. Add the outlines around her face. You're going to do some more details to her face all over. You're going to do some black outlines on her eyes and in her mouth, gray highlights and shading in her hair. Do some little white lines here and there in her hair as well if you want to. That's kind of a, an optional depending on what kind of acrylic you used to do her hair. When you are doing the details with black acrylic, you're going to want to dilute your paint slightly so that it isn't so thick and it kind of flows around the details of the nail without covering the details of the nail, if you will. We're going to be doing her lash lines. Give her some really nice eyelashes as well. Don't forget to, to do all the outlines basically everywhere. Give her her pupils 
And then we're going to give her the little details on her face. She has a little bit of a mole on her, just right below her mouth. She's got fangs that you can that you can draw in. And as soon as you're happy with your details, you can call it done. It's basically a case of however much you want to do. If you did give her the necklace, don't forget to paint on the little details of the shell on the chain. And then when you're happy with it, apply some gel sealer over her dress. Basically anything that's that glittery black. Just apply that over the entire back and then also over her fingernails, the seashell necklace, and her lips. After that, finish everything else. So the purple areas, her eyes, her hair with a layer of matte top coat. And then as that's drying, you can set that to the side and we're going to be painting the remaining three circles with various scenes from The Little Mermaid with gel polish. So I'm going to begin and just do the first one that I would say, I'm doing these in the chronological order from the movie. So I'm going to do the one that I think you think of when you see Ursula and her crystal ball. It's just Ariel swimming along after she had found Prince Eric and she's going towards her grotto and Ariel's being watched secretly by by Ursula and Ursula seeing how distraught poor Ariel is. So we're going to be doing that one. She's swimming up and she's got um, her... Her tail off to one side, her hair is flowing in, in the water. We're just going to be doing all of these details. Cure or flash cure as often as necessary when you're painting these little scenes. And I will put the total list of the colors that I used in the description box below. Everything that I'm using for these little scenes is from Madame Glam for painting the Ursula and the, or for painting the little scenes on these uh, little clear acrylic discs. When I was painting these, I did all three at a time and I did them almost like assembly line style. I did the backgrounds and then I did Ariel's skin and then I did her hair on all of them and then I did her tail, you know, or whatever, the, you know, the order. But I went through and I was working on all three of them at the same time. And for me, I find I work quicker that way, more efficiently. But if that isn't the type of, you know, if that's not as easy for you to toggle between designs and you'd rather just work on one at a time, that isn't a problem. The one thing that comes into play where that is a little bit more time consuming is the curing. So if you are feeling like it's taking so long to cure everything, get a flash cure flashlight and just flash cure things quick and then you can move on. You can see me using mine even in this situation. But once you're done with all of them, just finish them with a layer of gel top coat and then set that one aside and then you can pick up the next one. I wouldn't wait to gel top coat them though. That's one thing. As soon as they're done, throw some top coat on them because you don't want, uh, at least in my house, I get cat hair and everything. I, yeah, as soon as something is done, I'm like, ooh, we gotta get top coat on this before it's covered in cat hair, which isn't isn't ideal, but it definitely is, is worth it for my kittens. Um, anyways, just keep working on them. Have some fun with it. Try to pick scenes that aren't like all the same either. So don't just pick, all three were, were Ariel swimming and maybe in slightly different swimming poses, but give them some variety. So I wanted to kind of showcase the, the process of the movie and Ariel's transformation. So the first one I picked was like I had said with her and her tail and she's, you know, trying to decide what to do because she just fell in love with Prince Eric and she doesn't know how her life is ever going to turn out. The next one is where she gets her feet and she just has, this is my favorite scene personally, where she gets her feet and she's just looking at her own feet in shock and awe. So we have that one. She's got her foot sticking up in the air. And if you are a Little Mermaid fan, I have a very similar, it's different, but a similar video that I did that was Ariel that transformed between tail and legs. And so that one is just a really fun video as well. So if you missed that one, that's from earlier this year. That is definitely a video I would recommend you go check out if you didn't see it because it just definitely has a, a similar type style to it. So that one's a lot of fun. We're going to go through, keep adding details to our Ariel. You can detail them as much as you like or as little as you like. I am doing some shading. I mixed some of the Madame Glam brown gel paint into the color that I used for her skin, which I'm pretty sure is Proud Nude. All the color names, like I said, will be in the description box. But I mixed a little bit of the brown with the skin color that I used for her to get this really nice, easy to work with uh, shade for her skin. The last scene I'm going to do, and this one is, if I was to cut one out and switch it out, it would be this one, uh, personally, just from the ones that I did. But this is the one where her and Eric are floating along in the boat and they're singing Kiss the Girl. And the reason I chose this particular scene is because I feel like it's one where Ursula is very indirectly involved because she had sent Flotsam and Jetsam to disrupt this little boat ride. So I also tried to choose designs for the, the, the little 
crystal ball scenes that were more important to Ursula specifically, but that wouldn't have to be the case. But this one's just a little bit dark and it's, there's less uh, detail opportunity because it's, it's just a little darker. And it's also painting these two faces. They're so small. They're so tiny, but you know, you do what you gotta do. So we're going to be painting the two of them. Ariel's got on the pretty blue dress with with the big bow in the back of her hair and she's just staring longingly into Eric's eyes. We're going to finish as much detail on this particular scene. You can kind of uh, scale back on the detail, especially facial feature wise. Obviously paint in everything you can, but if you do decide to do this one, it is so teeny tiny that it just may not be very practical. Once this one is done and completed, then you can throw some top coat on it just like you did the others. And once they're all three have been top coated and they're all done, then you can just go through and you can play with your new little Ursula scene. So there's the top coat, cure that, and then here we go. This is a case of give yourself a major pat on the back if you completed this design or even just stuck through it with the whole video because it was a long one. It is so much work. This is probably one of the single most um, hours dedicated to a nail design that's a single nail that I've ever done. This one and the Cinderella carriage nail that I did a little while ago. Those ones are those were time consuming ones and I did them back to back as far as sculpting goes and I really needed a nap after after I was done with these. I mean, it was over the course of like two weeks, but yeah, it was exhausting and I love them and I'm so happy that I finished them and they turned out just as they had in my brain. I hope you guys love this little design, crazy as it is, as much as I do. It is just so over the top and fantastical and I, I love it. So definitely click subscribe to see who knows what else they might come up with and I will see you guys next time. Bye.